see you guys in the dark. This story takes place when I was around 16 or 17 years old. I lived with my dad in a little apartment in a very questionable area. It was the type of area you'd not want to be out in and when the sun goes down. Up until a certain time, like 10 or 11 p.m., there would be a cop or two in the area patrolling, making sure that there was no gang-related activity going on. I had a job at a restaurant in the city, which was about a 30-minute car ride and an hour-and-a-half train ride. The train was a couple of blocks away from my house. Since my dad was always too lazy or hungover to drive me, that was my main form of transportation. I went to work around 3 p.m., and would usually get home around 12 or 1 a.m. This was my schedule four days a week, aside from having school. I would see a lot of familiar faces on the train because of this, but we never really made conversation with each other. Until one night, when I got out of work late because some asshole wanted to sit in the restaurant past closing. Thanks to them, I missed my train. The next one wasn't scheduled to arrive for another hour, so having nowhere to go and no money for Lyft or Uber, I sat there waiting. No one was around me, so when this older man showed up, kind of staggering a bit, I assumed that he was another drunken hobo in the city trying to catch a train to sleep in. Something about his face gave me deja vu, but I shrugged it off, thinking maybe I've just seen him on the train here before. He made his way over to me, much to my discomfort, and started up a conversation. He wasn't slurring, but the way he was looking down at me gave me goosebumps. He asked me why I was out there so late, all by myself. I had to reply as not to anger him. I mean, we were alone, and he was close enough to me to pull out a knife or something. Anyway, I told him that I was waiting for the train. He asked me which one. Now the train was color-coded with a strip on the top to indicate whether it was going north, south, east, or west areas. I took blue, but I lied and said that I took green. He looked at the schedule above the benches and saw that the green train was coming in 15 minutes, so he said that he would keep me company. For those extremely long 15 minutes, he asked me how long I had been working at So-So Restaurant. This made my blood run cold. I never told him where I worked, so I looked at him and very timidly answered, For about a year. He laughed. He said, Wow, it's already been a whole year, huh? At this point, my skin was itching out of anxiety. And as soon as the green train came, I knew that I had no choice but to take it. I said goodbye to him and thanked him for the chat, hoping that would be the end of it. Nope, he suddenly told me that he took the green train too. So he followed me on and sat in a seat right behind me. My mind was racing about whether he was going to try and do something to me, like chloroform me or hurt me, in some way or other. But we rode the train in silence. I was trying to figure out how I was going to lose him. There weren't many people riding the train at that hour. Our car was empty, unfortunately. As the ride went on in a menacing silence, I could feel him staring down the back of my head. I waited until we got to a stop where there was another person, and I was so relieved to see a woman sitting there. She wasn't boarding, so I immediately got off the train, and the man followed me, as expected. I took a seat on the bench next to hers, close enough for her to see and hear everything going on, hoping that she would catch on. The man had noticed that I was sniffling, allergies, and being out in the cold, and asked if I was sick. I told him no, but he insisted on giving me these weird pills he had that were supposedly cold medicine. I declined in a louder voice. Sorry, I don't accept pills from strangers. This prompted the lady to look at us, and I made eye contact with her. She knew now. Now this went on until a blue train came, and the lady got up, giving me a look that told me to get on with her. So without explanation, I did. She waved me over to sit next to her, and when the man tried to follow, she said, No, you go sit over there. Made him sit a couple of seats across from us. He chose the one where he would face us, and stared at me the entire time. I was shaking and about to burst into tears. The woman leaned over and whispered to me that she had a pistol. I felt safer with her there. We whispered back and forth about what happened. I told her where I lived and how I was worried that he would follow me home. She told me a friend of hers would be boarding the train soon, and when he did, she told me that his name was Ray. Ray was filled in about everything and agreed to escort me home. She promised me that I could trust him. 
The two of them waited with me until I got to my stop. The man was still watching me, started to smile widely, resembling the Cheshire cat. He shouted, this is your place, right? To which I didn't respond, and just gave the woman a hug and thanked her. Ray and I hurriedly hopped off the train, and as I looked back, I saw that the woman had pulled out her pistol and told the man to sit back down, even blocking the exit with her body. I finally let myself cry in relief. Ray walked me home and tried to calm me down by telling me about his job and his family. After watching me get inside the gates of my apartment safely, I thanked him profusely for his help. So this happened to me a few months ago. A new family recently moved into my neighborhood at first. They seemed pretty nice. It was a woman and a man and their two kids. One boy and one girl. Since they were new, my family presented themselves to them and brought them a welcoming gift. Since they were unpacking, my family asked to help them. They accepted, which meant that I had to help. We started, so there was one box that caught my eye. As I went to go get it, the man had stopped me and said that he can get it. That's when I started to wander, like crazy, what was in that box. That night at dinner, my family invited the new neighbors, but they declined so it was just our family. I asked my mom if she knew what that box had, because it looked really weird. She told me that I should not judge, and probably it was just a private thing, so I shouldn't get into other people's business. Later that night, while I was sleeping, I heard our back door open and footsteps coming in. I locked my door and wanted to call the police, but then I would get in trouble, so I just left it like that. The next day I woke up and checked the back door. It was unlocked. I was creeped out and told my mom. I told her that I thought that family came in and did something to the house. She then called me crazy and that I have to be respectful. And what if this was the other way around? After that, she told me that I have to hang out with the boy because he left all his old friends at his old town and he needed someone to play with. So later that day, I hung out with him at the park near my neighborhood. I asked for his name. He told me that it was Diego. My name is Diego. At first, I was like, oh my god, we have the same name. Then he said, like, Diego from Gracchi. And there is a TV show I like to watch called Gracchi. And a character's name is Diego. I was a little creeped at first, but then I shrugged it off as coincidence. Later that night, during dinner, I felt my family was being watched. After dinner, I was going to spend the night at my friend Jake's house. So the next day, I ran into the boy and his mom. He asked how the sleepover was. I said, how did you know? He said, your mom had told me. I went straight back into the house and asked my mom. She said she never said anything to one of them and that they were lying. But then my mom said something that scared the fudge out of me. She said the neighbor's mom, let's call her Asia, asked if she could have the number to her doctor. My mom said that she never mentioned this to Asia. She then started to get suspicious. We secretly called my Uncle Larry, who is a police officer, to investigate the house to go see. He found something really chilling. It was a camera in the kitchen. It was hidden. That's when I remember someone came in the back door that leads to the kitchen. Since we already had enough evidence, we went to the neighbor's house, but they were not there. So we waited for when they came back an hour later. My uncle had knocked on the door. Asia opened it, and my uncle said that he was going to investigate. She said yes but she had to do something first. My uncle said no, and she had to wait outside with her husband and the kids. Then my uncle told my mom he found something in the box. It was full of cameras, and they looked exactly like the one that he found, so the family had been spying on us this whole time. We ended up pressing charges, and that family moved somewhere else. So this happened when I was 11 years old, in the 6th grade. I listen to my teacher sometimes, but I'm just always quiet. One day I was on my sixth period, which happens to be gym, and we do laps. Once we get to the end and we make a turn, there is this big fence. When I was running, I saw what looked like a 30-year-old guy waving with a wired grin. I couldn't tell who he was waving at, so I kept on running. Gym was over, so I packed up. I was getting ready to leave home when I was going to the gate in front. And when I exited, I saw the same guy who happened to have been looking, but he was not grinning anymore. 
He was smiling now, so I started to speed walk because I was getting scared. After I got far from school, I turned back and I did not see him. I was definitely relieved. When I was walking, a blue car had pulled up to me, rolled down its windows a little bit. I couldn't see his face at all. I heard his voice. He said, you look like a nice kid and smart. I smiled and said, thank you. Then he said my full name. I was shocked and then asked him how he knew my name. Suddenly, he rolled his window all the way down. It was the same guy with the creepy smile that I ran into. His car was just parked there. I was only five minutes away from home, so I kept on running. After I made it to my house, I was sweating, my hands were shaking, and I went outside, locked all of my doors and windows, and went to sleep in my bed. When I woke up, I went to go see what time it was. It was around 11.32 p.m., I was thirsty, so I wanted to get a drink of water, so I got up to go get water. By the time I went to the fridge to go get cold water, I heard a knock, so I went to go see who it was. I looked into the window, and what I saw shocked me. It was the same smiling man with an item in his hand. I could not see because the outside lights were off, but I thought I was going to faint. I ran to my mom and dad's room and tried to open it. The door was locked, so I banged as loud as I could. They got mad at me for waking them up. I told them that there was a creepy guy outside of the house. My dad went, and I stayed with my mom. My dad saw nothing. Suddenly, he heard a sound. He went to go check it out while I was still staying with my mom. I heard a scream, and then my mom called the police. The police had arrived, and my dad was holding the man down. He had a kitchen knife and was breaking my window. The police arrested him and took him. After about two days, the police gave information to my dad about what happened. So my dad told me that the guy had been stalking me every time that I would walk home from school and watch me in my window. I tried to tell my friends, but they don't trust me. I'm only 14 years old. And what would have happened if I kept sleeping and did not tell my dad that the guy would break in my window and try to kill me? If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.